Beijing has quietly dropped its antitrust probe into Google, just as U.S. China trade talks intensify, a signal that China is narrowing its list of corporate targets while stepping up scrutiny of NVIDIA. Regulators at SEMR say a preliminary inquiry found NVIDIA violated China's anti-monopoly law in connection with its 2020 Mellanox deal, a move that could lead to penalties or operating restrictions. Reports this week also suggest Chinese authorities have told major tech firms to halt purchases of certain NVIDIA AI chips. China's foreign ministry replied that it is willing to maintain dialogue, without confirming specifics. All this lands on top of the U.S. tightening this spring on NVIDIA's China-bound H20 chips and China's April curbs on key rare earths, while U.S. lawmakers now threaten aviation access in retaliation for mineral squeeze tactics. Translation, both sides are sharpening leverage at the exact points that matter most to AI supply chains, and NVIDIA sits at the crossing of every pressure line. Let's break this down. NVIDIA is not just another tech company. It is the beating heart of AI innovation. Its chips power everything from self-driving cars to cutting-edge research labs to the latest breakthroughs in generative AI. The company is so important that its CEO, Jensen Huang, has become a global figure in tech and geopolitics. And Huang has worked tirelessly to ensure NVIDIA maintains access to the Chinese market, even lobbying Washington directly to allow sales of advanced chips to Beijing. But here's the twist. The same NVIDIA that fought so hard to keep China as a customer is now being targeted by Beijing itself. Chinese regulators have launched an investigation into the company, and they've already accused NVIDIA of violating anti-monopoly rules. According to China, NVIDIA tried to corner the market, hurting smaller players in the process. Now, this investigation didn't come out of nowhere. It traces back to a deal NVIDIA struck in 2020 when it acquired an Israeli company called Mellanox which specializes in networking solutions for servers. Normally, you'd think this has little to do with China. After all, neither NVIDIA nor Mellanox is Chinese. But here's the catch, because NVIDIA does so much business in China, Beijing had to sign off on the acquisition. And when it approved the deal, it imposed strict conditions. Now, regulators claim those conditions were violated. At first glance, this sounds like just another regulatory dispute. But let's not be naive there's a much bigger game at play here. This isn't only about monopoly practices. It's about politics, leverage, and power. Just days before this announcement, China unveiled two major moves. First, it launched an anti-dumping probe into American chip imports. Second, it announced a review of U.S. restrictions on China's chip industry. In other words, Beijing is retaliating against Washington's own crackdown. Think about the timing. Only last week, the U.S. government tightened restrictions on Chinese semiconductor firms. Companies like Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, China's largest chipmaker, have been repeatedly hit with bans preventing them from buying American technology. Washington's logic is simple. Deny China access to the chips it needs and slow down its progress in artificial intelligence and advanced weapons. But Beijing is not sitting quietly. Reports say it has delayed or restricted shipments of rare earth minerals, materials crucial for making high-end electronics. And now it's using its regulatory system to put pressure on NVIDIA. This is tit for tat, an eye for an eye in the world's most high-stakes tech conflict. Caught in the middle of this geopolitical crossfire is Jensen Huang himself. He has invested years building NVIDIA's relationship with China. Last month, after intense lobbying, he even managed to convince Washington to allow certain chip sales to Beijing. According to reports, he structured a deal that gave the U.S. government a percentage of NVIDIA's China revenue, around 15%. That was the compromise. Huang thought he had secured a breakthrough. He even spoke publicly about the importance of China to NVIDIA's future. Quote, NVIDIA has been in China for 30 years. This is the second largest technology market in the world, growing very fast, full of innovative customers. If you want to be a great company, you need great customers, and China is that market. Strong words, showing his commitment to keeping ties alive. But Beijing clearly isn't impressed. Instead of embracing NVIDIA's olive branch, it is tightening the screws. By accusing the company of violating anti-monopoly laws, it sends a strong message. Foreign firms will play by China's rules, or they will pay the price. For Donald Trump, this creates a test of leadership. Remember, Trump returned to the White House promising to protect American dominance in artificial intelligence. He pledged that the U.S. would stay ahead of China in chips and computing. 
Yet now, one of America's crown jewel companies is being dragged through an investigation in Beijing. This is not just a business dispute, it's a geopolitical plot twist. And it raises bigger questions. What happens if NVIDIA is punished in China? What if Beijing imposes fines, restrictions, or even bans on certain products? Will other US tech firms be next? Could Apple, Qualcomm, or Intel face similar crackdowns? And how will Washington respond? This is the new normal. The US and China are no longer competing just with tariffs or military drills. They are competing through technology, and chips are the battlefield. Whoever controls chip production controls the future of AI, the future of automation, and arguably the future of global power. Look at the stakes. Without advanced chips, AI systems cannot train. Without AI, economies lose their edge. Militaries fall behind. Innovation stalls. This is why both Washington and Beijing are willing to go to extreme lengths, bans, tariffs, investigations, and even supply chain sabotage. And let's not forget the global impact. Countries in Europe, Asia, and beyond are watching closely. Taiwan, home to TSMC, the world's leading chip manufacturer, is under even more pressure as tensions rise. South Korea, with giants like Samsung, is being forced to pick sides. Even nations in the Middle East and Africa are caught in the middle, because access to chips determines their ability to modernize. For ordinary people, this war may feel distant, but its consequences are very real. Shortages of electronics, higher costs for smartphones and laptops, slower rollout of AI-driven healthcare or education tools. All of this is connected to the chip war. When Washington bans exports, when Beijing retaliates with rare earths, the ripple effects hit the global market. Now back to NVIDIA. Will it survive this storm? History shows that companies targeted in China often struggle. Some face fines. Others are forced to share technology or make concessions. In some cases, they lose access to the market entirely. For NVIDIA, losing China would be a devastating blow. After all, China is not just another buyer. It accounts for a massive share of the company's revenue, with countless Chinese firms relying on its GPUs to train artificial intelligence. Jensen Huang knows this, which is why he has been fighting so hard to keep the relationship alive. But at the same time, he faces pressure in Washington. U.S. lawmakers do not want American firms empowering China's AI industry, especially as competition heats up in defense and surveillance technology. So Huang is walking a tightrope, balancing between two giants that both demand loyalty but punish compromise. It's a position no CEO envies, but it reflects the reality of doing business in today's divided world. And here's the irony. Both the U.S. and China claim they want free markets, innovation, and global growth. Yet their actions are creating walls, not bridges. Every ban, every probe, every retaliatory measure pushes the world closer to technological decoupling. That means separate supply chains, separate standards, and a fractured global economy. Is that where we're headed? Some experts say yes. They predict a future where American companies design for the US and its allies, while Chinese companies build for their own sphere of influence. Two ecosystems competing but not cooperating. And chips, tiny pieces of silicon, are the dividing line. For now, NVIDIA is the latest casualty. Tomorrow, it could be another company. The chip war is escalating, and neither side is backing down. Washington believes it can starve China of the technology it needs. Beijing believes it can retaliate, adapt, and build its own alternatives. Who will win? It's too soon to say. But one thing is certain. The outcome will shape the future of technology and geopolitics for decades to come. The United States and China are not just fighting over trade. They are fighting over who will control the 21st century. So keep your eyes on NVIDIA, keep your eyes on Beijing's next move, and keep your eyes on Washington's response. Because this battle is not slowing down, it's only heating up.